why did it, why do you think it took so long for you to all get back together again and start having that conversation? It has to. I don't know. There's a kind of a zeitgeist thing. I don't know. The people who came to see us in 2009, some of them saw us back in the day. A lot of them were like nine when the first single I ever bought was Too Much Too Young, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, or um, it was, where's Dominic? Yeah, it was the, the music that my parents played when I was growing up. What was it? The house cleaning records. Yeah, you know, um, so there was, there was this kind of, all these two different generations of, of fans, mm. you know, and, and the music sort of meant, meant, and it was just, just the right time. Because like now you have like born again bikers or born again mods, you know, people, they've, they've grown up, you know, kids have grown up, left home, you know, what, what should we do? I know. So, I, and, and the rules are different, music is different. Mm. I would never have, um, thought of, of going out and seeing a, a 60 load of 60 year olds when I was 25 you know um, but it's but it, it's different now you know you, we, people, we sort of carry on with and you know, music still means a lot to me you know whereas perhaps it didn't mean that much to my, my parents you know they were more you know you know, did you avoid the Germans for a, you know I think we were bombing you you know what I mean it, it's, it's a, a generational thing you know yeah, my parents, you know, went, went through the war, you know, you know that, that hasn't happened. And it is amazing that kind of generational thing. I mean, I'm guessing that the, the audience that comes to see you now is so mixed. But yeah, 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 like I say, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, you know, big, um, <laughs> they, they people come with their children, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which and is their grandchildren, just, yeah, I'm guessing. Like, okay, you know, less than that. <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's funny, it's like, you know, um, girls will come up to me and go, you know, my dad's a big fan, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's like, oh, thanks. Yeah. But I suppose it's when it's like my grandfather's a big fan is when I really need to start worrying. Yeah. yeah. Can you see a, a, a time when it'll stop for you? Pe you know, playing yes, I'm sure. You? Yeah. But it's every time we put tickets on, on sale, we talk about a tour, you know, I, you know, uh, Linval usually goes, I don't know, what are we going to do? People will never come and see us, you know, and he really worries about, about this. But we'll put the tour, I mean, the, the audience will tell us when it's time to not do it, you know, because, and, and if, if all we can do is like get, you know, 1,500 quid for playing on the back of a lorry outside a pub in Bedford, you know, then I think perhaps it's time to, you know, knock it on the head. But people want to see us because, you know, but, but they, they vote with their, with their feet, you know. They, they, yeah. they buy tickets, you know. Yeah. I'll be coming along, because I've yeah. not seen you since you reformed. Right. I saw you back in the olden days, right. which is, uh, sorry, I've got to say olden days. Yeah, yeah 79, 80. 79, yeah. 80, at a Rock Against Racism thing in Potter Newton, Potter Newton Park. Park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. else was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so there's a, yeah, there's a few of us, yeah. That was mental, wasn't it? That was really mental. I, I mean, I, at that point, I was just used to seeing bands like April Wine at Bradford St George's Hall, Smell of Patchouli, and, uh -huh. and so I come and see something like that for a really strong political cause. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I have a sense that, that we, we've sort of lost some of that, that real kind of political edge, because my Im impression and my memory of that time is that it was a highly politicised environment. Mm, yes, definitely. Yeah, it was. It was, well, mm, Margaret Thatcher was, um, went in, yeah, we've got, yeah, uh, so that was seven, May, May 79. Seven, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that was, that was the beginning of, of, of all that. But and I, it goes back to the, what you were saying about the tribal stuff mm. earlier, you know. Um, music was something that you nailed your cultural colours to. Yeah, yeah, wasn't absolutely. it? You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, when yeah. I was at school, you get beaten up if you came to school with a, you know, a Deep Purple album under your arm. You know what I mean? Or you know, a Tighten Up Volume Three yeah, yeah, under yeah. your arm. You know what I mean? It was, it was, it was that sort of thing. You know, you, the, you music defined what you were culturally yeah. and consequent. You know, I suppose, I suppose politically, socially. Mm. And I, I don't know whether that's that's still as relevant now. I, I don't think it is. It, it it's changed. It, 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 it's different, but it has to be. Yeah. You know, things have got to have got. Have, but things generally tend to be cyclic. So you know. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. So I don't. You know, it's like when, elect. You know, was it? You had 
um, the specials were kind of gritty, urban, talking about real things, and then you had the, you know, Spandau Ballet and Duran fucking Duran, you know, where it was like <laughs> Paul Smith suits going down to Rio and floppy hair, you know what I mean? Which was, for me, was the music of Margaret Thatcher and the, you know, you know it was that, you know, the, 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 the new money, the escapism and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So that, but that was a direct antithesis of, that was going to, re, to like the, the reality of, of, of the specials, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I, all, I, I will never like John Taylor, because he was on um, Round Table, and they played Ghost Town, you know, which was like the greatest record ever made. Uh, and he goes, <laughs> I don't like this record, I don't like the specials, they, they, um, they, 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 um, they hang out with skinheads, and I don't like skinheads, you twat, you know. As he lit another you know, 50 pound uh, nose. You know what I mean? so, I'm sorry, that was, I didn't mean to say that. I'm, 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 I, wasn't, I wasn't going to badmouth anybody this evening. No, so we'll edit that bit out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and then sort of the, the electro stuff sort of happened, and then you had pop groups again, you know, Oasis and, and Blur and whatever, you know, so things, yeah, think, yeah. things change. So, okay, we'll, we'll hang around and, and, oh, yeah. and stuff will happen. I don't, I don't know. But there's always going to be that thing where kids of 15, 16, 17 are going to buy a guitar. Oh, yeah. You know, put their fingers just there and then go like that and go, wow, this is good. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's always, that's always going to happen, you know. Absolutely. Ow. Um, I was just going to ask about the 70s and 80s and um, being in the group that you were in, the uh, multicultural group, and presenting what you were presenting when you were going around England. I mean, how hostile was it? On the Clash tour, it was pretty hostile because we weren't known. I mean, basically, we had fans come to see us. Um, so, occasionally, you would have, although it always struck me as something that was, why would people spend, you know, £2.50, you know, whatever, um, to go and see a group and then have a fight? It always struck me as, as kind of odd. Um, but um, it rarely happened. I mean, it, it's. It, Occasionally it did, which was, was crap. But there was, when we played with, on the Clash Tour, we did this show at Crawley Leisure Centre. That's like south of, that's near Gatwick. And there were an awful lot of you know, South London football supporters were there. And an awful lot of them were skinheads. And an awful lot of them were NF skinheads. And the atmosphere was like, Absolutely, it was awful. It was like, oh shit, this is going to be really tough. And it was probably one of the scariest shows I've ever done in my life. And we sort of went on, played Liquidator, you know, and all that sort of stuff, you know. And it's like, hey, you're supposed to like this, all right? And sort of, you know, got out of town fast. It was, but we were aware that this was going to be the audience that we were going to have to play to if we were playing this kind of music. And that, I think that sort of gave us a lot of resolve to like, you know, we're going to have to talk to these people and try and sort of show them that, that like, you know, obviously that this, what you're espousing is absolute crap, it's not going to work. So um, we were always aware of that and, you know, we doing the sort of Rock Against Racism shows. But, but in a way, we were Rock Against Racism, it's racism because here's black people and white people on the same stage playing the same music together, making this sort of fusion, you know, it, it walked like it talked. It, there was very little point preaching, if you like, because the mere fact that we were there doing what we were doing kind of, kind of did it. Um, and they were all kind of cowards, you know, anyway, you know, they were just saying, we're going to get the specials, you know, we, you know, the specials were the specials plus two, you know, um, selector were the selector plus six, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, fuck off, you know, please. You know, it can, of course, it, nothing ever happened, you know, all, all bullies are cowards anyway, aren't they, you know? So, you know, um, so I suppose there was always that in the in the back of your mind, or there was always somebody who was like, you know, um, the Millwall firm are going to come and, you know, or the the so and so, you know, but you know, yeah. It, but it, that was an awful lot of the the violence, if you like, that ero that was around at that time. It was more to do with football um, and and an awful lot of Watney's Red Barrel, you know, on a Saturday night. You know, I mean, has anything changed? I don't know, I mean, I don't, I'm a football supporter, I support our local club for my sins, 
it's difficult being a lead supporter. Uh, the last few years have, have actually seemed to be all right, but I've started to notice it has become slightly more aggressive now. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are definitely people who go to the football who I wouldn't want to spend very much time with. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know. I don't. I don't do football. It's not a. I know Terry's and, and Limbal and Brad. They, they were all involved in, in you know, mm. supported their particular teams. It's nothing that I've, I've really. You know. But it, but football was a big that, again tribalism, wasn't it? It Absolutely. goes back to what yeah, we talked yeah, out yeah. about earlier. Yeah. You know, well, it's, I suppose just like music. I suppose the football is something that you nail your colours to, isn't it? Yeah. For, you know, but to yeah, but to then use it to go out and fight people, <laughs> bizarre, isn't it? Anybody got another question? I'd to see somebody's hand go up over there. Is there another uh, best player that you particularly admired, or who would um, go in your super group of all time, whoever that might be? Base players. Yeah. Um, oh, how long have we got? Um, <laughs> The first bass player I studied, if you like, I um, really uh, thought, oh, this is guy good, was Andy Fraser yeah. from Free, OK? Who was really good. Who, en who started playing in a ska band, I didn't realise this. But, but, he, um, but he, um, he played with John Mayer when he was like sort of 16 or something. Though Free was really young, you know, in, in, all right now was 1970. Uh, and Andy Fraser was probably only a couple of years older than me. Um, he was great. He, he was really good. I, I really liked him. And then once I got into uh, Booker T and the MGs, so Donald D Dunn, and then James Jameson Jr., you know, boring, boring, boring. Um, and all these virtuoso guys, you know, your John Patatucci and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, for God's sake, give the guy a Stratocaster. You know what I mean? Six string bass. You ever played a six string? It's like playing a fucking ironing board. Have you tried it? It's like, you know, it's awful. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, that's not what I do, you know. So it's, and it's not so much the actual, the bass players, but like the rhythm section, you know, or, or the drummer Charlie Watts is great. Because, you know, you, don't, you hardly know he's there, but he's always on, on, on the money. And it's the same with, like I say, with the Booker T and the MGs. It's the whole collective thing. And that whole sort of Tamil and Motown rhythm section. The Muscle Shoal guys are really good as well. Um, I don't even know their names. David Hub, Barry Beckett, help me out here. What are they? The Muscle Shoals guys. You know, you, you know the guys. They play on all those all those albums. And Little Feet. I, I was a big fan of Little Feet in the 70s. Uh, that rhythm section was amazing. Um, Sam Clayton, Kenny Gradney, and Richie Hayward. And, uh, Richie Hayward. Yeah. Uh, but that was, and, and the meters, one of the greatest concerts I ever went to, we had, a, was in general public, had a day off in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and there's this club, I forget what it's called, but the tour bus outside, and it's like, who's playing here tonight? It was the Neville Brothers. And it was this club about this size, and, uh, you know, 245s, you know, they finished the first set with a rock and roll medley, and finished the second set with a sort of 10 minute version of Fire on the Bayou. And it was absolutely amazing, it was really good. Uh, that was the, like the real deal, you know. That was really, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the average white band, they really impressed me as well. I saw them in 1974. They played in, in Coventry. It was 40p, and it was that they they had the the white suits. You know, they just they just recorded that fantastic album that well, they did with Arif Marden, and mm. um, before they went off and the and the drummer died. But they played um, that whole album, you know, pick up the pieces, and they didn't they did heard it through the grapevine as an encore. It was just ab and I can remember it now, you know, all those, you know, over 40 years later. It's absolutely amazing. So, you know, but it was always, it was like, the, it was the, the, the bass players that worked with the, it was the rhythm sections. It was, the, you know, like I said, why did I dance to Junior Walker and the All-Stars and not Pickety Witch? It was because, you know, it was James Jameson working with Oriel Jones or whoever, whoever it was. And it was that, that, it was that, you know, it was that thing, you know, yeah. It's transcendental, isn't it, music? It's so powerful. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm, you know, just feel very privileged to have been able to do that for, you know, go for 40 plus years. Yeah, it's great. Can we take one last question? From somebody. And if not, that's all right. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh. Yeah. And then, you know, but, so when you did get together, was there surprises? Oh, do you have children? Or did you already know 
Yeah, it was. It was. It was cool. Um, some people, you know, I, I would, you know, Christmas cards to, to Jerry. I get one from Roddy. Um, Linval, I suppose, was the sort of. I always sort of cite him as like the Henry Kissinger of two tone. He was the guy who, you know, the shuttle diplomacy. Yeah, yeah. He sort of got everybody sort of organised. Some people I kept in touch, more in touch with with, with other, others. If you know what I mean, you're not a Christmas card. Well, like, oh God, we got to send them a Christmas card. You know, you, you only ever sort of speak to people like that. So yeah, it was great, and and we all yeah we all had kids, which was fantastic. You know, and, and Brad comes along with, with his son, and I'm there, and there's my son, and and there's Limba. You know, Limba's got a daughter, and Terry's got two kids, and and there was this kind of it wasn't like a gang, but it was like all these um, early twenties people who were like you know oh. You know, yeah, it was it was extraordinary. Uh, it was, was No, Terry is exactly the same. <laughs> Ter no, <laughs> Terry. Um, the big thing about Terry was that he was he finally diagnosed with bipolar um, syndrome, whatever whatever it is, you know, and. And the medication involved in that is, is really quite severe. I haven't, Limbaugh was saying, you know, he, he had, carries like a huge big bag of, of stuff that he takes to, you know, to keep, him, to keep him level, you know. And he knows that he's got it and he knows when he's going through a, a, a bad time. So he'll, he'll come to the gig, won't do a sound check, just won't sort of make eye contact. He'll go on, do the job and then go home. But you know, everybody, everybody's like, OK, this is what he's doing. Sure, you know, yeah. He knows about it and he'll be OK the next day or whatever. And, and, it, that's, and that's how it works. But he, when he's great, he's ever so funny. I mean, he, he rarely tells the same joke twice. We were in Manchester, at the Manchester um, Apollo thing, and, and he just uh, walks the lip of the stage and, and he goes, um, OK, uh, spot the fashion outlet. Um, man at CNA, you know, um, George at, um, at, at Asda, Primark, whatever. And it's really, he'd never done that before. It was ever so funny. It was really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. He said that was the nearest thing I've ever had to a real job for ages. Because, you know, because he has to you know, write out all the scripts and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, he's cool. But it's some of, yeah, and, and but I kept in contact with, I, I, we had this the specials Mark II in in the nineties, which was me, Roddy, Limval, and Neville. Um, so you know, we, we were obviously we, we were in contact with one of them. Before then, I was in special beat with with Neville and, and Brad. So it wasn't like you know I'd never seen anybody for for all that time. So we've kind of kept in touch that that way, if you like. Yeah. Can I ask about the the current lineup? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Gary Powell from the Libertine is on drums. Um, Steve Craddock from Ocean Colour Scene is on guitar. Um, he's great. Yeah. What a lovely bloke, honestly. And like big specials fan well, yeah. from, from, from back in the day. Um, and is it, it's from Coventry? Is it from Coventry? No, or Birmingham, Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah. yeah. Um, and it'll be Nikolai um, Torp Larson who plays keyboards with us from he's fantastic it's real good I've got this um, traditional ska band like the Uptown Ska Collective and it's all the guys from the specials who aren't in the specials so it's Nikolai on on um, on keyboards the, the, the horn section that, that, that we use and these guys from Leicester and it's amazing um, with the horn section of Nikolai it's a bit like hiring Lewis Hamilton and getting him to drive a forklift truck you know what I mean because they have to play those parts but when you hear them really go, you know, it's like, it, it's amazing. With that band, I feel like I'm the runt of the litter, you know, because I, and these guys are the real musicians. You know, I, I keep making mistakes because I stop playing. It's like, you played what? You know, it's amazing. It, it's really, really great. So that's, um, so they're, they're, they're cool. Um, the trombone player is Tim Smart and his mate Pablo Mendelssohn, who they both play in the pit band at the Book of Mormon. In, in the in the West End, so they, they've been doing that for a couple of years. <laughs> I haven't been down to see it. Steve's been down, um, um, but uh, so they're you know, taking the time off to, to to do the tour, and I think we're going to have uh, the Q strings that are these three girls from from London. So we because that was the that was Brad's idea to have a string section. Okay. I was like, what? You know, rule by now have strings, you know. But um, wow, and so because we never really I don't think we ever got. 
we ever did Ghost Town justice. Ghost Town was done in the studio. It was it, whereas all that first and some of the second album stuff was stuff we played live. So we had we knew that it, it worked, but Ghost Town was just done in the studio, and I was never really happy with the way it was. We, we did it live. We never really, you know. But with the strings, it became this big. It was like Wagner. It all it had this this real weight to it, and um, and Brad had this thing where he used a, a, a drum machine to play the, 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 the bass drum and the snare on the, the last tour. So all of a sudden it was like gum, like it was yeah. originally. And it was like, and, when, and it was, Terry had this idea to open the show with it. And I was like, oh, that's dreadful. That's never going to work. It was fantastic. It was the best, a really good idea. And so we, we would open the show with, and it, we, it was like, it's such a phantom world of record, record, isn't it? Yeah, and it was it was it worked really really well. So that's that's kind of what it's going to be like. When Neville left, because he was he was ill, he, there was no way that he, he he started having these epileptic kind of seizures and these kind of absences and stuff. He was not well, and um, his doctors. We were going to go to Japan. Um, <laughs> we went to Japan for the weekend. We you know, Fuji rocks. So we we left on the. Thursday, got there on the Friday, did the gig on the Saturday, came home on the Sunday. Oh, it's, it's never got jet lag, didn't have time. You know, it was stupid. But um, you know, it's like Neville, doctor said, there's no way he's going to be able to cope with that flight. Mm. So we, we did it without him. And it worked. Mm. Um, and, then, and then Neville said, look, I can't do this anymore. So rather than replacing Neville, it's sort of like we, Limval took over mm. his bits and pieces and, and, and we carried on. Then Roddy quit. And it's like, so we got Steve Craddock in. And it's like, well, OK, there are some parts that you've got to play that are the same. But be Steve Craddock in the specials. You know, put yourself in, into that. So the band changed, the sound of the sure, band changed, yeah, yeah. you know, because you've got this, you know, this other sort of infant. Steve was a bit more sort of rocky, solely mm. than that sort of like rockabilly country kind of thing that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that Roddy had. And, but so the band, the sound of the band changed and it, and it was, it was fantastic. It was real good. So I suppose that's going to happen this year as well with Gary Powell playing drums because it ain't going to be Brad because Brad had that unique sort of really high snare Pang, kind kind of thing. So it's going to be interesting to see how, um, how, how that changes. You know, but it's still going to be special. So, yeah. So, you know. Well, it's, it sounds like an evolution. Which yes. Is, yeah. 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 So. Right. Good question. Oh God. Could go on for ages yet, couldn't it? If you like, yeah. I'm not fine. <laughs> If, if you could go back and do it all again, would you do anything different, do you think? Um, yeah. <laughs> God, what would you um, do differently? I don't know. I think I'd, I wouldn't let people have, um, get away with what they got away with earlier. I, perhaps I would have um, got a bit more sniffy about Taking so many drugs, you, sh you know. Um, no, I, I, I never did drugs. I know. I, 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 yes, I, I did. Of course, I did drugs. I was in the special when I was a school teacher. You know, <laughs> kids woke them up. Dad, when you were in the special, sir, did you take drugs? And I was like, of course, I took drugs. I was in the specials. You know, it was quite funny. Um, but no, but no, there was some 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 excess that I just kind of like. Okay, fair enough. And and I, I think I, I could have, you know, said, okay, I, don't don't be such a prat you know, whatever. Whether it done any help or whether it would have helped or not, I, I honestly don't know. I, it's difficult because, like I said, leaving the specials was, was dreadful. And there was no way, and I felt very impotent in that fact that this fantastic group was falling to bits all around me. And I wasn't able to keep it together. And, and I didn't know what to do about it. And it was very, very distressing. You know, uh, especially because, you know, we go on stage and we'd be absolutely fantastic. Um, and then we come off stage and sort of sulk and seethe and not talk, talk to one another. And eventually that progressed to the stage. But it's a way and, that he and it was it, And it, it was awful. But there's, there's um, this guy I know in, in Stoke on Trent who says to me, well, Horace, everything eventually turns to scrubbing. And, I, and it's kind of like, 
and he, he, he was right, but it just seems so horrible that something that was so amazing just became, you know, like, oh God, we've got to go down to the top of the pops again, you know, look, you know, which, which is like awful, you know. When I was sort of 14, to think that I might have been able to be on top of the pops was absolutely incredible. And then to go, you know, God, you know, um, and it's like, hey, should we do an American tour? Oh, got to go back there again. You're joking. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it's amazing. So it was, it was awful to be, to see these people, you know, um, change and, and be so negative about something that, that I would, that I loved, that I totally believed in. Mm. So, and, and I think it took me a long time to get over that. So I think I might, I would like to think that if I could go back again, I might have tried to redress that balance. I don't know whether I'd have succeeded, but I know I, I felt very, very bad about the sort of, the, the thing disintegrating when it did. Mm. It's not the best way to end a conversation, really, is it? I think, you know, yeah. well, it's not the end of it. Well, let's end it on a more upbeat. Um, no. Oris, is, this is the second time actually that, that you've done this where you, you, you've come and supported MAP, which is a, a charity that literally they're based only about a five minute walk over the way here. They, they, they run music and arts projects for um, really vulnerable young people who are at the risk of exclusion from mainstream education, running music and arts projects. Last year when we met, thanks to Toby over there. If you're in, ever in Harrogate, made to Tom Social, great place to go and have a, have a drink and have a bit of food and listen to some great music. But Toby, Toby brought Oris up and, and, you, and you came and, and people chipped in a few quid and we, we made a few hundred quid for the charity. Oris has done the same again tonight. He's, he's, he's come up here, he's waved a fee, so we're able to, to give that and support people in this community. You know, really make a difference through creativity but also make a difference through a love that that people still have for the special so thank you thanks for uh, you know as a as a 14 15 year old headbanger <laughs> you what's that <laughs> yeah you know i was uh, you know i became a rude banger because uh, monday nights <laughs> Monday and Friday nights, also school, 1979, 1980, they had, they had, this, they had the school youth club. And uh, there's a, a, the lab technician, Dave Costello, Dave Double Dex, we called him, so he had, he had Dex. He used to let us bring, bring a record up. And he really encouraged this whole, this whole thing of, of identity through music. But he, he, he said, you know, why, why do you all kind of sit in separate corners? Why, why are you not swapping clouds? So we, we started swapping, you know, so the, the one night I had long hair and, and, and my denim jacket on, and I swapped my denim jacket for a, for a crombie, and we got down, and that's when I discovered the magic of music, I think, that, and, mm. and the specials played a really big part in that. So, Oris, thank you. You're welcome. Oris yeah. Panther.